Professor Erik Betzig, congratulations and welcome to Stockholm. Well, thank you very much. How's life today? Uh, unusual, I'd say. Not my typical day, but very, very much fun. How did you prepare for this evening? Did you Google the Swedish royalties? Of or? course, yes. I you did? checked out both Princess Madeline and Crown Princess Victoria and their Wikipedia pages and so forth. Oh, great. So now you know all about it. You got the picture. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you say that one should follow one's passion, but you wanted to become an astronaut. Mm -hmm. Explain to me what happened. Why did you let that space dream go? <sighs> because, it, because they kind of veered in the wrong direction. So uh, um, going to the moon, which is what happened when I was a kid, seemed very exciting to me. But I felt like the space shuttle was uh, a step backwards to go in circles around Earth orbit after that. So uh, it seemed right from the start to me sort of a political venture more than an aspirational venture. Okay. So instead of the big distances, you choose the extreme nearness. That's right. Yeah. So, so I went to, to the inner space instead of the outer space. And we're, right. we're grateful for that. Uh, but I hear you know a lot about space history, right? That's true. Uh-huh. So, are you up for a, sort of a quiz? Uh-oh. Okay. Yes, um, go for let's it. Let's take Apollo 9. Yes. Okay, Apollo 9. Uh, that's Jack Schweikert, Rusty, uh, Rusty Schweikert, uh, McDivitt, James McDivitt, and I forget <laughs> the third guy, right? And it was, uh, <laughs> that was the first flight of the lunar module the first in Earth's letter orbit. Is S. Schweikert and Stafford. No? Scott. Damn. Scott. All oh, right. Maybe you know the names of yes. the backup crew. Oh, gosh. Now <laughs> you're really. But that would no. be the Apollo 12 crew, right? So that would be Alan Bean. Um, oh, God. Who's, who was the other guy? Was Bean right for one of them? Yeah. Okay. You got one um, right. Oh, it'll come to me, but not right now. Yeah. Gordon. <laughs> Gordon. Conrad. Give, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yes, okay, exactly. sorry about that. Yes. Pete is Conrad, it, yes. Is this is a secret uh, hobby of yours? Uh, well, I mean, I grew up with it, so when I read books by, one of the best books is by the guy on Apollo 11, Michael Collins. He wrote a book called Carrying the Fire. Really portrays what it's like to be an astronaut, and that one probably hooked me more than any other on, on wanting to be an astronaut, yeah. But now, you are a Nobel laureate mm -hmm. in chemistry. Uh, is there anything that could top this feeling? Uh, well, I mean, this feeling isn't top for me. I mean, you know, the, watching my four kids being born is certainly much greater thrill than being up on that stage. So, uh, there's many things in my life. I, I, again, to me, the award is nice, but... but accomplishments are objective and accolades are subjective and this is just an accolade in the end it's a few people's opinion but a lot of people have different opinions but so the, the things that I'll remember when I'm dying are when the inspiration hits for the microscope or working with my buddy in the living room or seeing in, in Jennifer's lab for the first time these molecules turn on and realizing we got it and this idea is going to work I mean, those are the real rewards of doing research, not the prize. I can understand that. Thank you very much, sure. Eric Betsy, and uh, I wish you a very happy evening. Thank you very much. Thanks.